Um, so we're going to introduce the first storyteller, mm -hmm. and it's Ryan Peterson. Ryan grew up in Anchorage and recently returned home from eight years in Northern California. Once a professional fly fisherman, he now works as an independent writer and media producer focusing on conservation issues statewide. So let's make a big hand for, for Ryan as he comes up to tell his story. Okay. <clears throat> so for the last 15 years, I have worked for most summers as a sport fishing guide. And uh, in the early part of that period, I was working at a lodge out in Bristol Bay. And one day these two um, guests show up at the lodge and they get assigned to my boat for three days. Now these two people, they didn't know each other. They were independent travelers. They were, they were parties of one who just by circumstance were put into the boat with me. And uh, you know, the, in the years since, I've learned that there's two kinds of people that go fishing alone, either Either A, you're just a very, an extremely passionate and dedicated angler and you're going to go whether your buddy can make the trip with you or not, or there may be a reason why nobody wants to go fishing with you. <laughs> but I, I was still kind of learning the ropes about that and, and so we headed out for the day and, and got to know each other a little bit. Art was 81 years old. He was not 81 years young. Um, He's a very quiet, reserved guy, but uh, also, you know, very comfortable with and, and you, you know, just a very, um, he's just very comfortable with his age. For instance, when he stepped from the dock into the boat in the morning, he, instead of doing some old man pride thing and refusing my, my hand that I offered him to it, he took it and he said, oh, thank you. <clears throat> and so, um, but Art had a thing, and his thing was that, He'd been to Alaska many, many times. He was a very experienced angler, but he'd never caught a king salmon. And he wanted more than anything to catch one, and the subtext was he wanted to catch one before he died. Um, so the other fisher woman in the boat was a woman named Linda. She was maybe in her late 40s, maybe, maybe 50. She's a total chatterbox, and for some reason she decided that I was to be privy to the minutia of her entire life situation at the moment, which included a recent divorce from a guy who had cheated on her with his secretary, just this saddest, most, you know, cliche story ever. And she was just looking to kind of ha have a brief respite from that situation, and on a whim she booked this trip to go to a fishing lodge in Alaska, and she was just, she'd never been fishing in her life, but she was found it determined to have fun and just take her mind off of the situation. So that's what she did. And we're out fishing and it wasn't too long into the morning before this great king salmon just grabs Linda's rod and, it, and it's just cartwheeling out in the air behind the boat. And she's going, oh my God, look at that fish. It's so beautiful. It's amazing. And you know, and I'm going, and I'm just like, oh, that's a great start to the day. Yeah. And, and Art's going, oh, that's a good one. All right. And so they get, so they, we get this fish in and put the lines back out, and pretty soon another fish grabs Linda's line. And it's just peeling out, and she does what I think she probably considers to be a pretty um, like thoughtful gesture, and she goes, Art, 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 here, here, take this rod, man. This is a great fish. You reel him in. Have fun. And now the thing about that is no serious fisherman would ever accept you know, the offer to reel in some fish that somebody else caught. That's like what you, you do that for kids. And, <laughs> but Art, Art was very graceful about it, and he said, he said, no, 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 that's it's your fish. You reel it in. That's, that's a good job. So lines go back out, and not too long, and Linda catches a third fish. There's kind of this other unspoken fisherman's rule, which is that if there's two people and one of them's having just fantastical luck and the other is catching nothing, the person with the good luck should probably not sort of rub it in by, by you know, loudly and overtly celebrating their, their good luck. But she's oblivious to this kind of rule and she's just going, oh my God, it's, that's three fish already today. This is the best day of fishing ever. Oh man. 
And Art is just like silent at this point. And he starts to dig himself into this little hole of bad luck despair. And I've seen it before because I've been there. And I'm doing everything I can to kind of get, get him a fish because this, this can go a lot worse than what's going on now. And he's just quiet. I'm, I'm surreptitiously switching their lures back and forth. I'm, I'm like putting his side of the boat in the, the good spot so that and nothing's working. And finally, he hooks his fish. And uh, it jumps out of the water and instantly comes off. And Linda, and he just goes, damn. And Linda goes, oh, man, that's too bad. It would have been great if we could have got him to the boat, huh, Art? <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay. So that was day one. Day two, we go out. Linda catches three fish in the morning. Art's in deep in his pit of despair. He's talking to no one at lunch. There's like, it's like me and her just, we're talking back and forth. And then I talk to him, but he's not even really talking to me. But there's this third leg of the triangle between him and her that is non-existent. She, they're just, he's, he's doing the old guy thing where you can just selectively ignore whatever you want to ignore. <laughs> and, um, you know, at lunch, she's like, oh, Art, Art, you want the rest of my chips? And he's just, like, Art, you want my chips? And she looks at me and just kind of shrugs. And. So in the afternoon, the other thing is there's, there's a third rod in the boat. There's those two, two clients, but then the guide has a rod, which is attached to a rod holder, which is attached to the stern of the boat. And if a fish grabs that rod, the client can kind of take it out, and then legally that, that can become their fish if they're, if they're going to keep it. And sure enough, this rod just goes boom, and it, this fish is just ripping lines, screaming it off the reel. And... Uh, and I go, Art, man, grab, grab the rod. That's your fish. That's your fish. And he's like, oh, what? He just get, he's confused. He doesn't know what's going on. And I'm like, this is a fish. And it, I'm, I instantly realize there's no way he can kind of shuffle his way to the back of the boat. Like physically, he couldn't, couldn't do it. So I grab it out, and I, and, I, and, I, and I put it in front of him. But there's this thing where I have to get his rod out of his hand, give him that one, and then cross the line so they don't get all tangled up. And I'm just going, Rod, get, take the rod. Art, take the rod and give me your rod. And meanwhile, in the franticness of it all, Linda is just getting all worked up. She goes, Art, Art, take the rod. Take the rod from Brian and give him yours and then put it underneath and go over. And, <laughs> and Art just goes, shut up, bitch. <laughs> And Linda's just kind of like. <laughs> and the, and the, the fish comes off, thank God. And, and, and Linda goes, I, I want to go in. So I take her in. Linda departs from the story at that point on that sad note because, I'm almost done, because uh, she made arrangements with management not to fish with Art the next day, not surprisingly. And so Art was assigned to, with me and another guy, and we flew over for the day, because remember, he still hasn't caught a fish. And we go to the Nushigak River. The Nushigak River, until recent times, has had the largest run of wild king salmon in the world. 10, 20, 30,000 fish will enter the Nushigak from Bristol Bay on a single tide. That's more fish than the Kenai River gets an entire year sometimes. And we hit one of these phenomenons just exactly squarely on, and everyone caught fish all day long. Art, there, at one point we timed it, and the longest we went between, uh, the longest we went without having a fish on was 61 seconds all day long. So he caught his fish. Now, I don't know what the moral of that story is, but it reminds me of, a, of a, one of my, the, my favorite things ever written about fishing was written by the humorous Jack Handy, who has this, who, by the way, is a, he's a very dedicated, dedicated fisherman. He came um, to a, a lodge I work with in Kamchatka, Russia, this summer by himself. Um, but he's got this line, he references his wife in it, and he says, Marta says, the interesting thing about fishing is that it's two lives connected by a single strand. Come on, Marta, grow up.
Thank you, Ryan.